That landing bird just begun, and you can see the water below. And we have Splashdown. Kind of the orientation and everything of Starship uh, all the way through re-entry. And then got a new view here. We have two external views. We have this one on flight three. We've got two for this one. Uh, and we're going to continue adding views as we continue to evolve Starship. Again, this is, this is an experimental vehicle. Believe me, I want as many camera views as you all do. Um, so... Huge shout out to the AVI and the software teams and everybody that's been working with us. We're, we're getting more cameras on Starship, uh, not just because it looks cool, but this provides an incredible insight into reentry, which is, you know, historically a really tough window to Starship look through. Um, the physics of reentry are insanely intense. Uh, one of my favorite NASA astronauts, Victor Glover, recently described it as with the forces and the flows and the temperatures, it's like pointing at a raging river in one spot and saying, tell me exactly what's happening right there. And like, that's what a ship is experiencing as it goes through as it's moving through the atmosphere at, you know, more than five miles a second and heating up to thousands of degrees. So just having visual representation, just being able to see what's happening is incredibly valuable. Um, so these views are going to be through Starlink. We've got this one. This is in one of the forward flaps looking back. So if you see it rotating around, that's because, again, it's embedded in one of those forward flaps. So as we get through uh, and we start to build up density in the atmosphere, um, those those uh, those flat this view is going to move around as the flap does. Um, and then the other one we had a little bit earlier is looking at one of the other forward flaps on the other side. Eventually, we're going to keep adding more cameras to Starship, uh, get a couple of different views from the outside of all the different areas, um, and then also eventually to be able to see payloads once they're deployed. So a lot more exciting stuff coming up in the future. But right now, we're, we're getting closer to reentry. Again, we're going to be moving at hypersonic speeds at more than five times the speed of sound. We're going to see that plasma start to build. So, Kate, Jesse, excitement coming up. Yeah, as you can see with that view on your screen again, high def brought to us by Starlink. We can see the plasma beginning to build as the ship is getting closer to the Earth's atmosphere. Now, how, how, let's talk a little bit about how Starf will survive reentry, hopefully, and control itself. Exactly. We've been talking about this, this entire flight test. There's 18,000 hexagonal ceramic tiles surrounding the bottom portion or the Earth-facing side of the ship. Starship 100 kilometers altitude. Good attitude for entry. Great call-outs there. Now, during atmospheric re-entry, the vehicle is going to see temperatures as high as 2,600 degrees Fahrenheit or over 1,400 degrees Celsius. So those tiles are there to help protect the vehicle from this extreme heat. Yeah, and the flaps will help control it. Now, one noticeable difference I see immediately, um, those flaps are not moving as much as they were on flight three. So that is a great sign, right? We had uh, unplanned loss of uh, roll control on flight three. So we added some additional thrusters and we can see that uh, they're working well and we have a much stable, more stable view. So those flaps, there's four of them, two at the top and two at the bottom. Um, they're made out of stainless steel. And uh, yeah, they, they help steer, steer the ship, which as we can see, the plasma continuing to build. Uh, now, if the ship survives re-entry, <laughs> it will have to perform a flip maneuver uh, as well as a landing burn. We saw this demonstrated a in a couple of high altitude flight tests back in like 2020, 2021. Um, similarly- Temperatures increasing on the nose with unexpected ranges. Great news there. Uh, it sounds like the temperatures that we are getting during this point, which again, we usually don't get during spaceflight because of this plasma. We're getting this live. This is a great news. So similarly to, uh, for example, the, the serial number 10 test that we saw a couple years ago, 
We're hoping to duplicate that again today. Hopefully we will see it live. Um, and basically the three center engines of the ship will reignite um, and gimbal or point to help flip the ship until those engines are pointing down uh, so that it can land vertically using Raptor's thrust. And as you can see, even from the beginning of the program, we've designed Starship to land on Mars where there are no runways or other humans to help out. We also want rapid reusability, so we're doing... The vehicle is passing through 85 kilometers altitude. The flaps have control of the vehicle. Great news. Flaps have control of the vehicle. That's exactly what we want to hear for this flight test. Yeah. Um, again, we are going to be doing a propulsive landing instead of a more traditional means like parachutes. And we are expecting re-entry to begin here in just about a minute. Re-entry. An awesome view that we have here. This is, the, this is the same view that we had when we first uh, returned from the coast phase. Again, this is looking at the side of one of the flaps. And can, it's incredible that literally at the bottom of this picture, we're basically looking through plasma, <laughs> which is just absolutely mind-blowing. Wild. Very wild. Now, we are expecting... Entry to begin here in about 30 seconds or so. Entry to splashdown is expected to last about six Perfect minutes signal. long. Mauritius. And that flip maneuver should occur around uh, about 10 minutes before splashdown. And such incredible views Starship that we're getting. approaching peak heating region. And great call outs there. Yeah, these views are absolutely astounding. Most um, temperatures continue to rise with an expected region. And in your bottom right hand corner, you can also follow along with the altitude of ship as it's returning back to Earth. So once again, this view is basically looking down into the plasma blanket that is building up around uh, the exterior of Starship. It is traveling, as you can see on your screen, you can look in the bottom right-hand corner and see how fast it's going, how high it is, as well as the general orientation. Again, we're seeing a lot more stability, a lot more control here on this flight, which is great. It shows that the iterations, the Starship learning... is now an expected peak heating region. All right, great news there, telling us that this is basically the hottest point uh, that Starship should get. Uh, during its re-entry. Now, the heat shield is working with the atmosphere for some, like, free braking, okay? <laughs> the, the atmosphere is helping to slow the Starship down. Yeah, exactly. We're not using any engines or thrust to slow the vehicle down, exactly what Kate mentioned. We're just using the atmosphere and those heat shield tiles protecting the vehicle as it's coming through that high heat temperature. Yeah. Now, this is another one of those moments that we have been waiting for, Right now, the ship is currently re-entering the Earth's atmosphere, and by all looks and all call-outs that we're hearing on the net, it is doing pretty well. Now, we do not plan to recover the spacecraft today, but rapid and reusable—excuse me, rapid and reliable reusability is the ultimate goal. And just pausing to just take in this incredible new and different view that we're seeing. We did get a similar view in Flight 3, uh, but again, the vehicle did lose a little bit of its control, attitude control, um, and this is a very stable view. This is great. This is exactly what we want, and we are hearing that we're getting expected call-outs. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Starship is seeing half a G of acceleration, remains on a good entry trajectory. You know, it's incredible to look at this photo and wonder, wait, is it real? Is it frozen? Um, <laughs> you know, we can see the, yeah, so I was just going to say we Those can. Those temperatures have stopped increasing. Oh, that is great news. Uh, the temperature is no longer building. Um, but I was saying, like, we, we have a little bit of indication there. We can see that streaking occurring that occurs and tells us that this is, this is indeed a, a, a true view. So once again, we are looking basically through the plasma that is building up through, or excuse me, around the exterior of the ship. And I still cannot get over that we are getting a live view of re-entry right now, live on your screen. Again, we've said this over and over, but all thanks to Starlink. We are able to use Starlink in space, which we're getting this incredible data. 
and not only just the the data from the sensors, but getting live imagery of what is actually happening, which is great, which we've never been able to do um, live before. Right. Now, just a quick um, uh, future outlook here. So in about, uh, uh, let's see, at T plus about one hour and two minutes, we should hear uh, a call out for entry transonic. That means that the ship is going near the speed of sound. And then about a minute after that, we'll hear another call out saying entry subsonic, meaning that the ship is going below the speed of sound. So these are all continued indications that uh, the atmosphere, right, as the ship comes back down, it is getting through the, the, the more dense part of the atmosphere and that atmosphere is helping to push against the vehicle and those heat shields are protecting the vehicle during this high heat period. Yeah, Kate, Jesse, we're, we're starting to see as the atmosphere gets denser, you're starting to see a few more particles make an appearance in the plasma there. You can see you're looking down at the aft end of the ship in the top left, and you're you're seeing essentially the flame build up as we go through reentry. Um, you've been hearing the call-outs. The, they're tracking things like temperatures in the nose cone, and those um, were right where we modeled them to be, which is really cool to see and to see in real time. Um, but we're coming up, we're at about 67 kilometers in altitude. Our last signal with the ship on flight three was at 65. So we should be making it past that point shortly. Obviously, as you guys pointed out, we're in a much better control this time as we re-entered in the right at attitude uh, and our flaps have been steering the way so far. Uh, once we get through transonic, that's when you've Start got essentially... Raptor landing bird different areas around the vehicle where the air is either moving faster or slower than the speed of sound will eventually get to uh, subsonic, which we have some experience with. We did in our suborbital campaign. Start uh, and then Starship, Starship will eventually get down to its terminal velocity uh, as it's floating down uh, to the water. That's just about 200 miles an hour or so. Uh, we are hearing that we're starting to chill some of the engines as we are, if we make it all the way down to the water, still going to attempt a landing burn, but still still a ways to go. We're at about 64 kilometers in altitude right now. We made it through what's expected to be the peak heating, but now we're going to start encountering increased pressures as the atmosphere gets thicker and thicker. So we're at 63 kilometers, so we've already made it farther than we did on our last flight when that last signal was coming at 65 kilometers. So again, what, what we're really looking at here is the performance of the heat shield of the flaps, of the seals in the flaps. There's just a whole bunch of different areas that we're keeping a really close eye on as we re-enter. Starship remains on a good entry trajectory. And looking like we're still on a good trajectory. If you're seeing little camera moves, that's the flap moving as it continues to maintain uh, the attitude of the vehicle as it re-enters. And I mean, not just camera views, but we've got sensors inside the ship. We've got those sensors down at the very aft end of the vehicle where we pointed out we had some intentionally missing tiles where we've got some sensors looking at just how hot it's getting around there. We intentionally put those in essentially the least critical part of the heat shield, uh, where if if you had any kind of a breach, it wouldn't be great for reusability, but wouldn't be critical for actual uh, making it through the reentry into the landing. Fifty-eight kilometers. We're continuing to descend. Again, right now we are we are over the Indian Ocean. We're actually uh, getting closer and closer to that expected splashdown point, which is just to the uh, off the northwest corner of Australia. Yeah, 
And if you keep you keep an eye on our speed, the speed is dropping. We're, we're hitting the thicker part of the atmosphere now. The speed's going to start dropping precipitously. We're going to start getting to, to transonic pretty soon. And then after that, we'll get into subsonic, where we're, we're moving less than the speed of sound. But wow, what a light show so far. External temperatures are starting to come down. Again, this camera view is looking right at one of the, the forward flaps. And we're, we're strategically putting some cameras around the vehicle to just look at the, the different areas. That, ooh, looks like we got the flap starting to come apart a little. Yeah, it does appear that we have a little bit of burn through there. We can see pieces of the vehicle flying off. What a show it has been. It's been like watching Interstellar or something. <laughs> this is wild to see this, but the ship is still coming down, which is incredible to see. How far can it go? That is the question. Keep your eye on the altitude in the bottom right-hand corner. We're at 54 kilometers right now. Now, ultimately, the data is the payload today. We've been saying it multiple times. We're the, you know, our teams are, are sitting, uh, reviewing this data live, learning where the hot spots are. As you can see, there's an obvious <laughs> hot spot there with the flap, um, and learning how we can improve this design. The goal was to get as far through this high, uh, this high heat reentry as possible.